Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank God for his goodness and his mercy on tonight. For his love and kindness. Thank God for his grace and his truth. God bless you, Sister Jasmine. Praise the Lord. Give her, I'm a little, little bit late coming on tonight. <clears throat> give her some a little time to get on. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Deacon Rashad. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, bless the Lord. God bless you, Evangelist Turner. God bless you, Mother Thomas, Deacon Thomas. Amen. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Hallelujah. God bless you, Sister Lashanda. God bless you, Mother Foster. God bless you, Sister Karen. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to get ready and get started. And with a word of prayer, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your love and kindness, for your grace and truth. For this, another opportunity for us to open your word. And we pray that as we open your word, you would open our hearts, cause us to hear what your spirit will say to us this night. In Jesus' name, we pray, Lord God, that you would look on the bereaved families of those um, young people that was shot and killed. We pray for the speedy recovery of those that were harmed. And even for those who did the shooting, we pray for them that you would touch their hearts, Lord God, and turn them around, turn them away from their sins, we pray. In the name of Jesus, that no more life will be lost at their hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Man, we're going to be reading for an opening scripture, Psalms 24. And it says, There the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity or unto idols, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing, and that's the blessing of salvation from the Lord, and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Salah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Salah. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearers, and the doers of his word. God bless you, Mother Wilson. God bless you, um, Sister Lawana. Amen. We praise God for all of his goodness and his mercy. Amen. And we are going to um, go right to the word on tonight. Amen. And share with you what God has given us. Amen. The question was asked me earlier. Um, 
I had given some homework on, uh, I guess it was Sunday, Tuesday maybe, um, pertaining to the Antichrist in chapter 11. I want to close that out tonight and then we're going to go and look at some things God put on my heart in um, 2 Peter, I believe it's the second chapter. We're going to look at that in tonight. Amen. Praise God. So let's go to Daniel, the 11th chapter. And we're going to just look at a few more things concerning the Antichrist. Um, out of this chapter. So Daniel chapter 11, let's start at verse 31. And it says, An arm shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and they shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate, or that makes the temple desolate, because only clean offerings were to be offered in the temple. And if you um, offered an unclean animal in the temple, it would defile the temple. Amen. And so, um, uh, I believe his name was Antiochus Epiphanes. He, when he came and sacked Jerusalem, he offered a um, pig and it defiled the temple and left the temple desolate. But as I always say, before the enemy was able to come in and destroy the temple and tear down the wall of Jerusalem, Israel had forsaken the temple. Amen. And that's important to understand because um, the Bible says we are the temple of the living God. Amen. And if anyone defile God's temple, him shall God destroy and we have to be so careful that we don't defile the temple. And that's what's happening a lot in the church today is that we as the temple of God are not um, keeping ourselves as God has said for us to do. And that's why I believe we're seeing the church in such a state as it is. Amen. But the Bible said judgment must first begin at the house of God because God is coming for a church without a spot or wrinkle or blemish or any such thing. And as we have said before, as persecution comes against the church, we'll see the church go through a period of what? Purification. So that when God um, returns, he's going to get the church that he's coming for. Amen. But that's what the um, Antichrist is going to do, is defile the temple. Now, we said he's going to sit in the temple, showing himself to be God. Amen. Because he's going to exalt himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he, as God, sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And we're going to um, see a little bit of this here. But he says, so they're going to um, take away the daily sacrifice that God required, and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate, or makes the temple desolate. Verse 32, and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt by flatteries, but the people that do know their God are going to be strong and do exploits. And that's what we want to stay focused on, making sure we already taught a lesson on how you know that you know him if you keep his commandments. Amen. And we talked about the two commandments. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, thy mind, thy strength, and understanding, and thy neighbor as thyself. Look at verse 33. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many, yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame, by captivity and by spoil many days. Now when they shall fall, they shall be hoping with a little help. But many shall cleave to them with flatteries. Remember we read in the 13th chapter of uh, Revelation that um, the saints are going to be given into the hands of the Antichrist. Amen. And he's going to, um, for a time, he's going to have power over them in that 
He'll be putting them to death and different things, not destroying their faith. Amen. But it will be a purifying process. And that's what it says. Verse 34. Now, when they shall fall, they shall be hoping with a little help. But many shall cleave to them with flatteries. In verse 35, and some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them white, even to the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. Now, look at verse 36. And the king, this is the Antichrist, the beast, the king shall do according to his will, because even though it's going to be um, 10 kings, the Antichrist is going to be over all the other kings. Amen. It talks in Daniel about a little horn coming up in the midst of the other horns and plucking up three. Amen. And it says, The king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods. And shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished, for that that is determined shall be done. Amen. And that's what we read in Thessalonians. He's going to exalt himself above all that is called God, so that he as God sits in the temple of God and he receives worship. Neither shall, verse 37, we in Daniel eleven thirty-seven. 37, neither shall he regard the God of his fathers nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. Now, this actual passage makes me believe that um, the Antichrist is going to have to be a Jew because he says he's not going to regard the God of his fathers, nor the desires of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. Why? Because what we discovered is he is going to literally be possessed by Satan. Satan is going to enter into him like Satan entered into Judas, take complete control of his body. That's why he's called again the son of perdition. Verse 38, but in his estate shall he honor the God of forces, which is the beast, I mean the, um, the dragon that gives him his power. He's going to honor him. Remember what we said. Um, whoever the devil empowers, that's who he gets worship through. Amen. And so he's going to honor the God of forces and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God who he shall acknowledge and increase with glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for gain, the land of Israel. He's going to divide it for gain. But at the time the king of the end, the king of the south shall push at him and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships. And he shall enter into the countries shall overflow and pass over. That's basically um, all I wanted to do. I just wanted to complete the um, teaching on the Antichrist. Um, and just to give us, as we said, in, in, in Daniel is the companion to Revelation. It's the Old Testament companion to Revelation. So I just wanted to close that particular part out. So we see this man, he is going to be um, a nar very narcissistic person. Amen. And because he's going to mainly be concerned about who? Himself. Amen. And, and we see that in, in the land today. So uh, let's, let's go to the... Um, Second Peter, because that's where I want to spend most of the time tonight. Second Peter. Um, Second Peter. 
we're going to spend most of the time in chapter 2, but I want to go to chapter 1, and we're going to start at verse... Let's start at verse 15. We're going to be looking a little bit uh, at false prophets tonight. Um... Because the Lord just kind of just kind of been on my heart all day, so we just going to look at this chapter tonight. Look at verse fifteen, um, Second Peter, one fifteen. Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. And he's referring to the things that he had taught them in First Peter and. Um, chapter 1 and Second Peter. Verse 16, For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. And fables also could be the myths, all those the Hercules and all the other mythical gods that um, when I was growing up, I thought they were just um made up I didn't really know people really believed in these gods but these was the gods of the Greeks and well of the whole world they had all these false gods but they were fables they were myths and that's why if you've ever really looked at the myths of the gods of Hercules and and even Superman is a modern day myth it was made up, um, Superman, I found out, was made up of, by um, some Jews. And so it's a modern day myth. But all these myths, you'll find that from one culture to one, uh, culture to culture, they differ. Amen. Because they're just made up. Amen. And so, but, but what Peter was helping the saints to understand and what we have to understand is that we are not following cunningly devise fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And we know that happened at the Mount of Transfiguration when he took Peter, James, and John up to the mountain. He was transfigured before their eyes. His garments became shining, um, whiter than any fuller or any detergent on earth could get them. Amen. And they appeared with him, Moses and um, Elijah, talking with him about his um, death. Amen. And um, Moses represented the Old Testament um, or the law, and Elijah represented what? The prophets. So we have there at the Mount of Transfiguration, the law and the prophets. But also we have Moses representing the, because um, remember what he says here. We, for we have not, in verse 16, followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you what? The power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Amen. Because, um, Moses also represents the dead. The Bible says that um, when Christ comes back, what's going to happen? There's gonna, the dead in Christ is going to rise first, and then we that are alive and remain are going to be called up to meet him in the air. So um, Moses represented what? The dead. But Elijah represented them that would be alive because Elijah never died. He was taken up in the chariot of fire into heaven. And, and that's why he's coming back to the earth as one of the two prophets in, I believe it's chapter, Revelation might be 14, but it's two prophets that are coming back to the earth, amen, and it's going to be Elijah and Enoch, amen. So that's what was represented on the Mount of Transfiguration, the living and the dead, the law and the prophets. But um, when the cloud overshadowed them, they were fearful. Um, they bowed down. But when they 
look back up, the Bible said, and they heard that voice that said, this is my beloved son of whom I'm well pleased, hear ye him? Because Peter said, let us make two tabernacles, one for, um, what did he say, one for Elijah and one for Moses, I believe. But he said, when they looked back up, it was only Jesus because the Old and Test, oh, the um, Law and the Prophets are fulfilled where? In Christ. So that's what he was letting them know. Amen. That the Law and the Prophets are fulfilled. Jesus was the beginning of the New Testament. Okay. And so we've not followed cunningly devised fables. You know, they make up this stuff as they go. But what we have is truth. Amen. We know that this is going to happen. I just listen to so many different people and, and it just makes me so happy that I'm saved and that I know the truth because um, we have the word of God to let us know what has been, what will be. Amen. But it's not a cunningly devised fable. Amen. Look what he says. Amen. And, and, and this is another point I want to bring up because if you notice how all of a sudden, we have all these superheroes. And a lot of people don't understand that the term hero comes from, um, has to do with the mythological gods. The heroes were the offspring of a god and a, um, and a woman. That's what hero... I, I, I don't know all of these myths, but I do know like Hercules had, uh, his father was a god, but his mother was a human being. That's what the heroes were about. That's why you got all these, all of a sudden you got all these superheroes because they have God and have man. Um, and, and so we got to understand what's going on. Stuff ain't just happening. Amen. And so uh, we are not following cunningly devised fables. They they might be intriguing, but they are still what fables. They're still lies. Amen. So we have the truth. Look at verse eighteen. This voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a what? Dark place. That's what the word of God is. It's a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. Shining where? In a dark place. The earth is a dark place. Look at all the stuff that's going on. It's darkness. Amen. And, and um, I'm going to talk about the matrix a little bit. I might do it Sunday because we have to understand that they're speaking to us through these movies. And The Matrix was one of the most um, antichrist movies I've ever seen. But it really speaks of where we are in, in this earth. Most people are asleep. And that's what the Bible says. You do in the dark. Amen. They that sleep, sleep when? At night. They that are drunken are drunken when? At night. But let us who are of the day, he said, um, we have to be what? Awake. Amen. Aware of what's going on around us, not just physically, but more, more so spiritually. And so um, we have to take heed to the word as unto a light. If you ever went out in the dark and all you had a flashlight, you had to have that light in front of you to see where you were going. And that's what the word of God is. It is that lamp. It is that light. And he says, we need to take heed to it as unto a light that shines where? In a dark place. Behold, darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness, the people. The only light. I can't even stress that enough, saints. The only light that we have in this dark world is the word of God. Because he created two lights, the Greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. But the lesser light is a perversion of the greater light. The, just like the moon draws its light from what? The sun. It's just a reflector. Amen. But it perverts the light of the sun. 
Amen. And that's what the darkness is doing. This is what we're about to go into. So we got to take heed unto the word of God as unto a light that shines in the dark place. Every word of God is right. Amen. And we have to gird up the loins of our mind so that we can see through all this stuff that's going on. Amen. Look what he said. Until the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts until Jesus come back. That's when the day is going to dawn. Look at verse 20. Knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. In other words, you can't have your interpretation of the word of God and I have mine. We can't do that. Amen. It's one interpretation of God's word. And that's why he's given us the word, but he's also given us his spirit so that we can understand the word and be brought to a place of unity. As we always go to 1 Corinthians where it says, Paul said that um, we should all speak the same things and, and there should be no divisions among us. It's too much division and we're going to see why. Amen. But I believe God in these last days is going to get his people, those that are truly his, on back on the same page. Amen. No prophecy of the of the scriptures of any private interpretation. Amen. Verse 21, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved or guided by the Holy Ghost. Amen. So the Holy Ghost gave the word and it takes the Holy Ghost to reveal the word to us. Amen. And that's so important that we get that revelation because this is this is the problem that we're seeing. I wanted to read that leading into chapter 2. And you'll see why. So let me read verse 21 one more time. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. What kind of men? Holy men of God, not unholy. See, we got too many unholy men of God. Yeah, they call themselves men of God, but they they just so unholy. And unfortunately, they get away with it because it's not, not many want, we, we don't do what the word of God said. We got to check these folk. Folks say they're apostles, but they're not apostles. But do lie. That's what the Bible said. But the Bible says that we are supposed to put them to the test. Amen. I don't believe we have. Um, I don't. I don't know that I know any real apostles of Jesus Christ. Now, there are apostles that are made by men. But I'm talking about apostles of Jesus Christ. Because one of the things that um, Paul said, and I believe, um, if you're going to be a true apostle of Jesus Christ, you have to have seen Jesus and walked with Jesus. Amen. Paul didn't walk with him when he was here on earth, but he walked with him. Um, Christ revealed himself. Amen. Because um, Paul said when Christ revealed himself to Paul on the road to Damascus, he didn't go and get taught by the apostles that were apostles before him. Oh, he went to Arabia. But when he finally went to um, see the apostles, they were speaking the same thing. Why? Because the same God that revealed um, himself to the, the uh, 12 revealed himself to Paul. That's how you know um, when you're dealing with the same God because he ain't going to tell you one thing and then turn around and tell me something else. He might tell you a little different than he tell me in the, in the explanation, but it's going to be the same thing. But here's the problem. Look at um, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Remember, no prophecy of the scriptures of any private interpretation. That's why I ain't, I ain't down with these folk with all this new revelation. Ain't no new revelation. You just got to get the old. Um, the Bible says, standing where and seeing acts for what? The old path. Amen. But look at verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people. Amen. 
there were false prophets among the people. Even as there shall be false teachers among you. Just like it was false prophets among the people. Why was it false prophets? What was the purpose of the false prophets? To turn the people away from the true and the living God. As we've been reading through the Old Testament, you see how the people kept going in and out of consciousness. When they had a good king that would bring them back to God, then they would follow God. But as soon as that king left and somebody else came in that wasn't following God, that walked in the ways of Ahab and the kings of Israel, because Judah had several good kings, but Israel um, didn't have any good king. And they were all idolaters. Because if you ain't serving the true and the living God, who are you serving? You're serving an idol. Amen. But they had false prophets. In those days, he said, even as there shall be false teachers among you. Now watch this very carefully. Who privily or privately, I say stealthily or under the radar, what are they going to do? Shall bring in damnable heresies. And what is a heresy? It's a false teaching. Some that's not true. See, one of the main proponents of false teachings is the Catholic Church. Not the only one, but she's the mother of harlots. She's where it begun. Because when you really research um, Catholicism, it goes all the way back to the mystery Babylonian religions that started with um, Nimrod. Amen. It started with Nimrod and them um, building the Tower of Babel to reach unto heaven. Um, they wanted to um, control their own destiny. God scattered them. He wanted them to go everywhere, but they said, no, we ain't going everywhere. We're going to um, be right here. We're going to build our kingdom right here unless we be scattered. So what did God have to do? He had to scatter them. Amen. He, he confounded their language. Amen. And understand, saints, they still seeking to build that Tower of Babel. If you look at some of the um, the uh, buildings that they built the, in the um, what is that the United Nations, it looks like what they call a ziggurat or a Tower of Babel. Amen. An unfinished. So they still trying to um, defy God. You got to get the revelation. Ain't nothing changed, saints. Them same spirits that were working and conspiring in men back then are still working and conspiring in men today. Still because what? The devil yet want to be God. He yet want to be worship. Amen. So we have to understand and we have to um, be aware because the Bible says um, be aware of uh, what do you call them? False prophets that come to you in what? Sheep clothing. But inwardly, they're ravening wolves. And how shall you know them? By the fruit. One of the fruit is they're going to bring in damnable heresies or teachings. Amen. Um, two of the things we learned in Timothy is um, they teach you to abstain from um, meats. That God said everything is good. And I know you got people say, well, you can't eat this under the law. We're not under that law anymore. Amen. You read your Bibles under the New Testament. The Bible clearly says that every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Why? For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Set apart. So now under the New Testament, we can eat whatever. Amen. So you have to always like, always say, rightly divide the word of truth. But they're bringing in down the heresies. And then also in the Catholic Church, they teach that the priests have to what? Abstain from marriage. They're not marrying. They're not marrying, but they show doing a lot of fornicating. Amen. <laughs> and them nuns and them. Because we still dealing with the... Um, Babylonian mystery religions and 
And part of the Babylonian mystery religions is illicit sex. They had the temple prostitutes. Amen. And the men would go and um, to the temple, and that's what they, they were for. So you have to get the revelation because it's all it's going on all around us, but if you don't understand what you're seeing. And so he said they're going to bring in damnable heresies, false teachings, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift or sudden destruction. Some years back, I just want to show you why we have to be so careful. Because um, it was this preacher, a uh, radio preacher, Jensen Franklin. We used to listen to him. And I liked listening to him. Used to because he was preaching the truth. Um, but I was watching him one day. And he was talking about prayer circles. And so I was like, you know, and, and it sounds so good. And he was talking about prayer circles. And um, when his friend had written a book about it. So I don't just receive stuff. I got to know what you're talking about and where you're coming from. So I did a little investigating. Come to find out because what he was talking about, um, building a circle around. And then you get in that circle and you pray or you pray a circle around certain area, all this kind of stuff. You know, they, they, <laughs> these, that's what these false teachers and false um, prophets do. Always something new. Come to find out where he was talking about, and what's his name? I forget his name, but he was a Jewish mystic or something like that, sage, and he had drew a circle and he got in and he prayed for rain and it eventually rained. I'll have to get that whole thing for you. But that's what he was teaching in the church. Witchcraft. That's what it was. Straight witchcraft. And um, I saw somebody, a preacher with the book and I tried to warn him. Um, I don't know if they listened or not, but I did try to warn him. It's witchcraft. They bring that stuff in the church. False time. You see, this is what he said. Privily, privately, stealthily. It sounds good. But you got to understand, you know, because it's a lot of stuff that you, you really have to watch what folks are bringing in the church. I want to know where it comes from. Amen. Um, is that something that... That's why I just like to stick with the Word of God. Amen. You can't go wrong like that. But... Listen what it says in verse 2. And many shall follow their pernicious, and pernicious simply means um, damnable, destructive, ruin or loss, amen, waste, destroying, utter destruction. Many shall follow their pernicious ways. You notice how it says, Many, you know, many shall follow these false teachings, amen. Because when we don't walk in the light, and, and, and one of the big problems is the way a lot of folk get caught up in it because it appeals, a lot of this teaching appeals to the flesh, amen. Not the spirit, it appeals to the flesh, and so they are led away the lust of their own flesh to their own destruction. Because it said, many shall follow their pernicious or damnable ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. I need to stick a pen right here. Amen. Because um, one of the problems I have is um, people, whenever they want to, well, most of the time, when they want to reference Christianity, they reference the Catholic Church and say, how the Catholic Church killed all these people. And they were, they did just, um, they got the blood uh, of men all on them. But I think that that's not the church. Amen. And then some of these other false religion, fake false teaching, the, uh, and I'm going to say it, the, um, um, what is that? The faith, word faith movement. 
Amen. Y'all better listen to what they're saying. If you follow that teaching, that everybody's all the saints supposed to be rich, what's going to make you is covetous. See, that's what they teach, covetousness. Amen. They teach you to be covetous. Amen. So, but they, what, crept into the church. But where did that come from? Red Mike was preaching that, but when Red Mike first started preaching it, what did we do? We called him a heretic. And we wasn't going for it. But what ended up happening? And he kept preaching. Now what? He said, I heard, I heard him say it. He said, what I was saying, when I was saying it, y'all was calling me off. Now all y'all trying to trying to preach. Now you're, anybody remember Red Mike? Remember he used to say, you can't use, lose with the stuff I use. Come to find out the stuff he was using was seed, time, and harvest. Basically. Yeah. Tying all of it to what? Money. That's how he got so filthy rich and famous and all of that. And so what God is saying is we have to be careful in this hour to hold on to the truth. Amen. Because many going to follow up. Look at this, this, this um, movement. Word faith movement. How big it is. Amen. And look at the Catholic Church. Many following that. But look at this. They cause true Christians to be evil spoken of. The way of truth to be evil spoken of. Even some Protestant churches because uh, they're teaching wrong doctrines. And so, um, but look at verse 3. And through covetousness, that's what motivates them. Amen. These preachers that love money. Amen. I've heard people say, I love my money. And the Bible said that love of money is the root of all evil. And watch these preachers that love money. They're going to do whatever they need to do to get it. Amen. Lie, cheat, steal. Um, mainly teach false doctrine. Amen. Got to watch all this stuff. And this is what the Bible tells us to do. And why are you teaching this? Because this stuff done slipped into the mainstream church, into the holiness church. You had your preachers of uh, L.A., preachers of Detroit. What were they teaching? False doctrine. Amen. It's, it's, it's in the church. So we have to be aware of it. Just like it was false prophets among them, there are false teachers where? Among us. And they come in privately. Stay sneak in. Because we ain't paying attention. Amen. Well, like I told you, I'm, I'm paying attention. Look at verse 3. And through covetousness, covetousness shall they make, with fiend or lying words, Make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation damnation slumbereth not. In other words, they're not going to get away with it. You might get by. Sooner or later, they're going to have to um, answer to God. But through covetousness, they have a covetous heart. Their whole motivation, even for being in the ministry, I was talking to my um, one of the deacons, and they were saying how one of their friends got into the ministry just so he can um, make money. That's what a lot of them in it, in it for. They ain't in it for souls. They ain't in it because God called them. They have other motivations. So we have to be careful and we have to be watchful. Okay. Look at verse 4. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Amen. It ain't going to be flood. It ain't going to be water this time. It's going to be fire. But he's going to bring the fire in. But that's what he said. He didn't spare the angels. He doesn't respect person. Satan was cast out. And one third of heaven was cast out with him. Why? Because um, 
they turn from the truth. When you turn from the truth, where do you end up? Um, believe in the lie. So, and look what he said in verse 6. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. Never forget, you know, because this is what some of them are saying. Where's the promise of his coming since the fathers fell asleep? All things continue as they were from the beginning. But the Bible said this they willingly are ignorant of that God has already destroyed the earth once by water. Amen. And he's going to destroy it again by fire. So he overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. You better get. And, and, and when I think of Sodom and Gomorrah, I think of Oakland and San Francisco. Sodom and Gomorrah. Modern day Sodom and Gomorrah. But God is going to overthrow him. Amen. And, and a lot of things that has happened. Um, we hadn't taken it. We didn't really understand it to be a judgment. But the fire and the earthquake in San Francisco back in what? 19, what? 06? Something like that. Like I explained before. Um, there was a goddess on the top of. I don't know what building was on. It was the goddess of prosperity, I believe. But when I went to San Francisco and I went into the museum over there, the only thing left of her was her head, her big old head. Amen. God shook her down. Amen. And the only thing left was her head. God wanted them to understand. Amen. 1906, that earthquake set the city on fire. Amen. And... and be bracing for one now. Amen. Because we don't know when it's going to hit. So you, you have to get the revelation. Man, God is going to judge all this wickedness, all this wicked stuff going on in America right now, all these lies they telling us. Amen. But look what he said. We're talking about the false prophets tonight. Verse 7. And delivered just like Watch this. Vex with the filthy conversation of the wicked. So Lot was the only one delivered. Lot, his two daughters and his wife made it out of the city. And they barely made it out. Just like the Bible said, the rights are going to barely be saved. Because everything they had was in Sodom. Amen. So when it came time to leave, the only thing they can leave with was the clothes on their back. And the Bible said, while they tarried. While they lingered, see, what happened? The angel, it was two angels. One grabbed Lot and his wife. One grabbed his um, two daughters. And they literally had to pull them out. Because he said, until you're out, I can't do anything. See, until the saints, amen, are caught up in the rapture. Amen, the judgment of God is not going to come. But the day, the Bible said, that Lot left Sodom, fire, it rained fire brimstone from heaven. But what happened to Miss Lot? She looked back and became a pillar of salt. Amen. Delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. See, we shouldn't be entertained by wickedness. We go to the movies and we um, watch wickedness. On, on our TV, just entertained by wickedness. It should vex us. Glory to God. Amen. It should vex us. Sin should be a vexation of your soul because it vexes God. It upsets him. I know these, these lying prophets, lying teachers want to tell folk, well, God ain't mad at you, but that ain't what the book said. The book said, that he's going to judge the righteous and he's angry with the sinner every day. And if he does not repent, he's going to sharpen his sword for judgment. So we got to tell folk the truth. These false prophets won't let them know. You got to repent. Turn from sin. If you want God. See, the Bible says that um, God through Christ has taken away all his anger. Why? Because 
The wrath that was supposed to be directed towards us when we accept Jesus Christ, the wrath that was supposed to be directed towards us was what? Um, directed on him. It was put on him. He was sinless, so he could take our sin. He can take the judgment that we should have been taking on him. The Bible said he laid upon him the iniquity of us all. Aren't you glad he did it? Amen. But he laid it on him so he didn't have to judge you. But if you still walking in sin, because I'm not one of them preachers, them false preachers that teach you that uh, grace covers your sin. It don't cover. It comes to cleanse. The wages of sin is still death. So we got to get our spirits clean to the point where sin vexes us, where we can't just... See, when I wasn't saved, I could cuss and not even realize I was cussing. Amen. Didn't bother me not one iota. But when I got saved, when my spirit got right, I don't like to hear cussing no more. Amen. And it seemed like cussing in it just another language. Folk drop F-bombs, little kids just dropping F-bombs and all this and that. And then... And you listen to preachers. Amen. Something is wrong. Amen. We got to ask God to clean our heart like he cleansed um, Lot. Because Lot, even though he was rich inside of him, he couldn't really enjoy the riches because all the sin that was going on around him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. He wasn't running to the movies to see the latest um, sin flick, it vexed him. And that's how it's got to be in us. Because if sin ain't vexing you, something is wrong. But he said it vexed his righteous soul. He said, and delivered just like vexed with the um, filthy com conversation of man of life for the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. God help us today. Amen. Because we watch all these wicked movies and then we go and tell other people, oh, you got to see that. That was a good movie. Amen. Full of um, fornication and lying and backbiting. Huh? That stuff, got to, you got to get to the point where it vexes you. Amen. Look at verse 9. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the lust, that walk, let me begin again. But chiefly them that walk after the lust, after the flesh, in the lust of uncleanness, and despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. So you got to be careful even how you, you, you speak. Like I said, even, I don't care what President Trump is doing, he's the president. He's at office. You, you, you recognize that um, office because God put him in there. Amen. So you have to make sure you say, Lord, help me not to you know, speak evil of them. Because watch this. But these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not. They're talking about these false teachers and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Another way of saying they're going to choke on their own vomit. Out of that which is coming out of them is what's going to kill them. Is to destroy them. Amen. Because the Bible said, even um, the a, um, Michael, the archangel, when he contended for the body of Moses with the devil, he didn't bring a railing accusation against him, but he said, the Lord rebuke you. I mean, he didn't start calling them all kind of names and stuff, but he said, the Lord rebuke you. You see, we got a lot of work to do. And I'm saying, God, work on me. Work on me. He was working on me today. <laughs> Amen. And I thank him for it. 
Look at verse 13. And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness. Talking about these false prophets, false teachers, male or female, it don't matter. As they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots are they and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Remember, they went out from us, but they were not all of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt continue. But why did they go out? That they might be manifested. You got a lot of them among us in high places. Amen. We got to look, look what he said. Verse 14, having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin. Can't stop sin. Can't stop sin. Amen. I was listening to one um, preacher and he was saying how, and this was like a board member in the Church of God in Christ, but he was a known homosexual and he said one one day he told him he said don't ever he was telling this preacher let that spirit get a hold to you because you can't you, you can't um you can, it's hard to fight that's a that's a hard spirit to fight and it just lay hold to you and have you going seeking young boys and for these relate, you don't want to do it no more, but you, you, you're caught up in it. Amen. Have you that spirit to drive you to lie and cheat? Are you following what I'm saying? Having eyes full of adultery, they cannot cease from sin. Beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices. <laughs> This is some deep teaching here. Cursed children. Verse 15. Which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. He was a prophet for profit. He had a reputation. You pay him and he'll... He had the gift of prophecy, but he was using it to profit off of. Amen. And had to be rebuked by the um, donkey. And if you read in Revelation, you see that um, the doctrine of Balaam and the doctrine of Jezebel is the same. They taught um, people to commit adultery and eat things offered in sacrifice to idols. So look what he's saying. Let me go back over that verse 15. About time to quit. Which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozar who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumb ass speaking with man's voice, forbid the madness of the prophet. <laughs> and what was he doing? He was prophesying for hire, just like now, how, how these folk, you can't hardly get these prophets, they ain't gonna come and preach to your church unless you promise them a certain amount of money. You got to fly them first class. You got to... It's very few evangelists like... Um, I saw Mother Foster on here. And I'm not saying this to um, fluff up. I'm tell, just telling the truth. Ain't, ain't many um, evangelists, if any, like um, uh, her father and them old evangelists. They didn't do it just for money. They did it for the love of God and for the love of the people because they told you the truth. And they didn't, they didn't, um, you didn't have to promise them uh, all this money. But what is happening? Um, just like it was false prophets among them, there are false teachers among us today. And we need to be aware of it. Amen. And then you had the, the preachers. 
You couldn't trust them around your, your, your children. Amen. <laughs> couldn't trust them around your wives. You got all these preachers and, and you got they were this one in the church and that one in the church. Couldn't even trust them around the sun. <laughs> all this wickedness that's is coming out. Some stuff I heard just lately. I say, God, but still they're on TV saying they're men and women of God. This is what the Bible is warning us about. Verse 17, these are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, because some of them can preach until the hair stand up on a bald head man head. They can preach. They gift it. But their words are just great swelling words of what? Vanity. Just like a balloon. Just full of air. But no real substance. That's what they're saying. They allure. When they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure. I want us to get this. They allure through the lust of the flesh through much wantonness or reckless living, those that were clean escaped from them who live in air. They are lured through what? The lust of the flesh. They teach, and this is what I was talking about earlier. You, if you covetous, then you're going to fall for covetous teaching. When they're telling you, if you um, give this much, and God going to bless you with this, and God going to bless you with that, and a lot of people fall for it. Because of what? Their own lust. They want to be rich. Quick. This kind of teaching. You know. But they are lured. Through the lust of the flesh. Through much one. And this is why I teach us. You got to keep that flesh dead. Amen. So that the enemy can't allure you away from the truth. Verse 19. While they promised them liberty. They themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought into bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through what? The knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Amen. Because you know more now. Look at verse 21. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it is happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again. You know how nasty that is. And the salve that was washed to her watling in the mile. We used to teach these. How many uh, remember hearing these scriptures warning us? Amen. We used to hear that a lot. Amen. But that's what's happening. God just laid that on my heart to, to, to teach this because we have to be so careful. And that's why I say even when you're watching people on TV, your, 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 your heart, your mind needs to be girded about with the truth. Amen. So you, you won't I always say you can eat fish and spit out bones. And for some of this stuff being taught ain't nothing but bones. Amen. There's a bunch of fat and bones. It's no real substance. And so um, we have to be careful. Why? Because just like it was false prophets among them, there are false teachers among us. Amen. And so what the Bible tells us to do is not despise prophesying, but prove all things and do what? Hold fast that which is good so that you are not led away through your own lust. Don't be led away through your own lust. Amen. Because when you um, bring this, this flesh under control, because that's what the Bible said, every man is tempted when he is 
drawn away of his own lust and enticed. When sin have, um, when you have conceived, it bringing forth sin. When lust conceived, bring forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bring it forth death. Do not err, my beloved son. Every good and every perfect gift comes from, comes from God, come down from the Father of life. Amen. God bless you on tonight. Thank God for his word. Amen. Let us be watchful. Amen. Because that's one of the things the Bible says is um, we're going to see and we're seeing it. In these last days is um, so much deception. So much deception. But if you know the truth, you'll be free to fight against the lie. Amen. So, um, God bless you. Sunday, um, we're going to have communion, as I said. We didn't have it last Sunday, but this Sunday we're going to have communion. So those at home, if you got your grape juice and crackers like we did before. And um, I know we have some at the church for those that will be at the church. But we're also going to, I'm not sure, because I was supposed to be off this weekend. And I was going to go get some um, more communion. Um, but they called me in to work. So we're going to use what we have, but then we'll have crackers and grape juice if more are there than we have communion. So we want to prepare for communion on Sunday. We want to remember on tomorrow night, Elder Fuller will be teaching our Sunday school lesson. Amen. And we have the new books at the church. Amen. If you want to um, come by, even if you don't you know, make it to church on Sunday, if you want to come by and pick up the book, you're welcome to do that. God bless you, I believe. Oh, oh, last thing. Um, I think I mentioned it last time. We got our church page up and running. And most, uh, well, a whole lot of you have responded to the invite to um, like it. And so Sunday, we're going to start um, taping from the church's page. So instead of coming to my page, we're going to begin or Elder Fuller's. He'll be on his page tonight because we wanted to give everybody a chance to, I mean, tomorrow night, we want to give everybody a chance to um, um, get locked in. But starting Sunday, we're going to be on um, the church's page, the Lord's House of Prayer for All People. We're going to be on that page so you'll be able to find us. Amen. God bless you. And I pray um God's choice is blessing on you tonight. And we pray that you will have a blessed evening. In Jesus' name, amen.